2021, if we could start with the pledge, the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag. To the flag. The flag. United States, States of America, America. 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 Trustee William Pell IV. Present. And Trustee Ann Welker. Here. Okay, so I will, <clears throat> like I said, I'll chair the meeting. So we hear from Eric. I uh, just want to make some announcements. The next work session for the public is uh, April 14, 2021, 3 p.m. And the next regular meeting of the trustees is April 19, 2021. Uh, we do have some letters I'll dispense with reading of the communication as you all have receive copies of these in your boxes or email. Um, I think what we need to do now is we need to go into executive session for the discussion of uh, some issues relative to personnel. Um, hey, Scott. We'll come... Yes. Can I interrupt you for a second? You want to wait for Eric for that? Um, On a timeline with Sandra. Yeah, I thought he was going to try and call in for that. Yeah, okay. I'm on the phone with him now. Uh, you can move into the next. Okay. Question. Okay. So we need Sorry, a Sean? on it on the second on the motion. We need a second. 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 All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Okay. So we will be back after executive session. Okay. Now you can. I'd like to make a motion to go back into uh, into the session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we're done with the executive session. Thank you to everybody for being patient. Um, we have a couple of discussions that are on. The first one is the Mill Pond Habitat Restoration Plan. It's uh, Mr. Abramson here, Mr. Lerner, yeah. somebody representing that. One second, I'll bring him in. Is that Clay? Not Clay. Not um, me. Not up to Clay yet. Mr. Ob uh, Mr. Abramson is here. Mr. Abramson? We're here. Are they there? We're here. <laughs> Just come on. Start your video. There you go. You got. Yep. You got the Steves here, Werner and Abramson. Both Steve and Steve. Okay, you gentlemen have been working very hard on Mill Pond longer than I can remember, longer than I've even been on this board. These two gentlemen have been very uh, dedicated and diligent in trying to uh, restore the. The health of uh, the mill pond, and uh, I'd like to give you both the floor. Okay, so we're hoping that we can go ahead today and agree that the you're going to send out for RFPs for the remediation five-year remediation plan with an, with the outline that was presented for. Uh, for bids so that we can ultimately start to remove carp in June, which is the most important factor that can be done to preserve the pond, according to Princeton Hydro uh, and Steve Souza from the past as well in his prior report. But the most important thing is we get the carp down to a low sustainable level and a low reproduction level. And we will then stop the flocculant and stop the churning of the bottom that releases the phosphorus into the water column that grows algae blooms. So uh, we uh, understand that the window for application for a grant has opened in March uh, and uh, it may be closing as of uh, June. Uh, I think uh, that's understood. And so therefore time is of the essence to get this out um, so that we can get a grant approval in. Uh, alternatively, in the last meeting that the trustees held, I think it was Eric had suggested that the trustees look into the possibility that there may be alternative sources of funds uh, outside of the WIPP program uh, and that the trustees might be able to find them in order to at least in 2021 do the carp removal. Carp removal is all we really intend to do in this five-year plan 
uh, should be doing in this five-year plan in the first year anyway. So uh, it's the only reason why we have gone to a five-year plan is WIPP, according to Janice Shearer, is insisting that there be a five-year outlook proposal for what's going to be done here uh, so that you don't keep coming back every year after year. So that's where it stands so far as we know. And uh, where I don't believe that uh, we've had any response to the suggestion, suggested outline of the request for proposal. And, um, but where uh, I think it, at least from our point of view, it was uh, robust and covered the, all the bases. Uh, you, however, of course, uh, may have a different view. Don't know where you are with regard to it. I just need um, some clarification. Um, I, I can we go out to? Can we um, submit RFPs without having the project approved? Do we have to submit the application for the project first and then have it approved by the Water Quality Committee and then go out no, to bid? No, you do that. You're going to have to ask Janice about that, and uh, because she needed a budget. Uh, she has to approve a, a, a sum of money according to what your, your planning and, and projected costs are. John, do you know the answer to that question? Yeah, we have to call over to uh, the procurement department. Either Allison or John can help us with this. Uh, they need to put together a preliminary budget and a proposal. Um, I, I see that there was a draft proposal provided, which does help expedite the process, but we need to coordinate with them. Uh, I call them get this drafted uh, and then this board would have to have a reso of adoption approving uh, the RFP process and we start that. Um, it, it's going to take a couple meetings. That's your question. Yep, that's fine. So we can get to work on that. That's what I wanted to make sure we were clear on that, Steve, that we, we don't have the ability to send out the, the RFP without going through this process. Okay. So it's frustrating, but, but uh, true. And the other thing I wanted to clarify is that um, we, um, it has been um, the understanding that it would be in the best, um, the best use of money for Mill Pond to make this a multi-pronged project and not focus solely on cart management, but also to have RFPs um, submitted for floating wetlands and um, a bit for education and um, some water testing as well. So that right. it's the whole picture that we're looking at. And that the feeling is, is the uh, best route forward for this. Yes, but there is a difference in timing among the events that you had specified there. Uh, while education could begin anytime you wanted it to, the carp removal, it's important to continue with that now in as much as we've spent a considerable amount of town money to remove 25% of the carp in 19, in 2019 slash 20, and we don't want them to just multiply freely without having been minimized, or else all of that money that was spent in 1920 will go down the chute. So the yeah, you're, sorry, that, I should have I should have been clear. Um, we're not. This may be a multi um, stage or multi step process, but I just wanted to be clear that it's not solely cart management that we're focusing on. There are other things as well, but I understand what you're saying with the expediency to follow up on last the last two years work of cart management this coming year. The, the draft RFP, which I, I trust that the trustees have all read, called for all of those things, including the next step after carp removal to be uh, littoral vegetation, floating islands. The only thing we didn't have in there was an education program. We did have water quality management in there for sure. Uh, 
but uh, certainly you can add an education program and somebody's gonna to have to specify what that should be. And, and that's something that you can handle internally in terms of, I'm sure, projecting costs on. You don't need to go outside for that one, but you do need to go outside for the carp removal, for the soil vegetation, for uh, if he, uh, or maybe you don't, maybe you'll do that internally, or uh, you have to go outside for floating islands perhaps, or maybe not, maybe you can do that internally. But, but time is of the essence to get the carp out in 2021. That's where our focus is here. While you have to do this as a five-year program to satisfy water quality improvement program, that the first step, the mandatory first step, according to Princeton Hydro, repeated over and over by them, is that the most important thing that we could do to, to push this remediation along is to remove more carp in 2021 and not allow them to reproduce and expand their population. Right, and I think we're all on board for that, Mr. Abramson. But as I um, ha have said, as I've said before, that the, from what I understand, the water quality, the the time limit for applications to be submitted began in the middle of March and ends in the middle of May, and no decisions are going to be made until after that point. So we can't rush this. Like we'll, we'll absolutely, in other words, we can't start anything until they award that application. No, I think that's incorrect, and excuse me, respectfully, I think that, I think you raised that question before. The, the, the answer in this meeting, the, the answer is that they will approve a certain amount of money based on your application. Your application has to be based upon RFPs. You have to pick the resources that are going to do this work and, and with, a, with a price and a budget for it. And then you apply to, w, uh, to, to the Water Quality Improvement uh, Project for the funding and the grant application. So the, the trustees have to get out, the RFPs have to, be, have to select the firms uh, and have to then submit for a grant for a grant of the amount of money that you have figured out. That's what so, has to be. So we have to work out the details of this, but pretty much just to, to make sure that everyone is on the same page um, as far as the trustees with the follow-up for CARP management, education, water quality testing um, combined with habitat restoration plan and floating wetlands in the immediacy for Mill Pond. Is that all agreed? Yeah, I, I'm, in, I'm definitely in favor of it, uh, the long-term carb management program. Uh, five years is a, is a good time frame that we could uh, pick. Um, I think once we start reducing the carp population, the larger fish being caught up, I think we should have some kind of introduction of a uh, indigenous, maybe a, like a largemouth bass in there or, or, or several species like that, that would keep the juvenile carp population down if they do spawn. So it would be more of a balanced ecosystem. We're looking at an ecosystem that's totally out of balance now. The carp are basically the uh, number one species in there, which we're trying to reduce the number. Uh, the water quality is terrible, terrible blue-green algae. We've got nitrogen and phosphorus going in there, causing you know, water problems. So we're working on that with the uh, floating islands and, and an educational proponent of this should be, you know, uh, best use of uh, the land around the pond. All the homeowners basically uh, come aboard and basically reduce the amount of uh, lawns that they have going down to the pond, uh, reduce fertilizer and become educated on what type of uh, species of plant and uh, shrubbery and stuff to plant around the pond. I mean, that right there, then you're gonna be pushing that, that poor water uh, quality back and you're gonna have root system, uh, you know, wicking up that uh, nitrogen and phosphor that will eventually end up in the pond catching it before it goes in. So all of this and having a five-year plan it's a business model that we can work on one year after a year after a year. And each year we could do a review over it and see where we need to change it for the next year or if not. So I, I think I, I think right now is, you know, to look at the, uh, you know, 
anybody that we can hire in order to remove the larger car carp that are in there, uh, you know, that proposal be submitted first and foremost, but with all the other caveats that we have discussed here. Bill, you got something in here? Are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. Um, just from a logistical standpoint, I, mean, I understand what Steve and Steve are saying. You got, uh, you got some protocols that have to fall into place so that, you know, what's done is timely. And I have, you know, reviewed this and I've had these conversations with Eric uh, as he's our president and he has been um, in discussions back and forth, forth with Janice so that there's a specific point person that's having conversations. Um, obviously I'm in favor of this. And he said that he's been speaking to Janice on working us through the logistics on making the proper uh, applications and the proper proposals and it's done the right way so that we could be successful on this project and other six other projects that the trustees uh, may endeavor to support or be engaging in. Uh, I wish Eric was here to speak to that himself, um, but that's what he articulated to me when I said to him about getting, you know, in the queue uh, to move forward with this important project. And he's, he has been in communication. So, uh, Perhaps we could get you a better update when he's here in person, but I fully understand what it is that you're saying. Um, it has to go through the process so that we're successful in a timely fashion to continue on with the work, with the funding, and um, we're gonna make sure that we do everything we can so that we, we do that, okay? Uh, and um, hopefully- I, I, ahead, do have, I have two, one, uh, one question. Uh, do we still have uh, the permit from the DEC for uh, carp removal in the pond, And yes. Is that a multi-year permit? It's not gonna expire or anything? I'm gonna make sure that's all in force because we're, we're moving forward, it's good to go. It's renewed annually. Okay, good. Yeah, so it's, it's current. Thank you. Right, I wish Eric was here to speak to this because he's been having the conversations as our representative, so. If, if it weren't for that wrinkle that came in from Janice, that she wanted to see a five-year plan, we would have been jumping on the proposal as originally submitted in January by the Mill Pond Association for the removal of carp alone this year, because all of the plans from Princeton Hydro call for that to be the first and only step to be done now. So. Uh, to have everything else that, that is backed up behind that uh, or it can be done concurrently with that to hold back the work that needs to be done now, I think would be a, 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 an, an opportunity for the carp to reproduce again and, or, and waste all of the effort right. in, well, in 1920. And in, I, 19, in 1920, they estimated that they removed about 25% of the carp. And it's, it, if we can project to remove about 25% or more now of, of the remaining carp in existence there, we will probably have this pond down to a manageable level where, uh, that, where the carp will no longer be the biggest issue. And then we can get on with all of the other factors of the littoral vegetation, the floating islands and everything else. But the number one thing is we can't let the, uh, the uh, time is of the essence here. And, and, and you essentially have in what I, what I gave you as a draft proposal for an RFP, essentially everything that you want to do, except for your education program, which you could flush out, flesh out yourselves into that. And, and, and at the same time that you're putting out the RFPs for all of the other work to be done, specifically the work that would have to be done in 21 to remove the carp, which is AC number one. Right. I mean, point taken. I wish Eric was here to speak to that because he's been having the conversations so that there is no wrinkle, as you would say. The only thing that I recall in the conversation was not any of the other factors that were on there, but that, uh, you know, a water testing component, a water quality component was important. So we know if it's being successful and we're moving in the right direction. But I know he was working closely to try and iron those wrinkles out on this project and other projects and, and, just to not bombard certain people with responsibilities. I've been putting my support behind the project through him as the point person that's been dealing with Janice to work out for yourself and ourselves a smooth 
procedure through that process. And all I can say is with him not here is perhaps I can get you an update. I can reach back to you on an update or, you know, uh, when I can reach him um, is the best that I can do for you right now. I, I would I would urge and ask that, that you please don't think uh, that the Water Quality Review Board will not act in sufficient time for us to be able to get carp removed this summer so that therefore there's no pressure to do the trustees portion to get the RFPs out. They're two separate entities. We don't hold the trustees responsible for what the WQIPP will or will not do with its its operations. But, but we, we would hope that uh, that they would come around to uh, making an exception if necessary uh, in order to, to approve what you have done so that we can actually get to the point of removal of the carp in a timely fashion in June of this year. I don't think that we're saying we're not going to act, Mr. Abramson. We're just Steve, saying Steve. that we're- You can use Steve. So Steve, I, I don't think we're saying we're not going to act. We And we understand the urgency of it and we understand the important follow-up. We're just hamstrung a bit by the process, but we will do the best we can to, to navigate this process. Okay, any thoughts? Yeah, the only thing I have to offer is that the optimum time to catch the carp is in the spring rather than in August. Mm -hmm. So the, the efficacy rate of capture is better early. That's when they spawn and they're grouped right. up. So it's easier. Uh, other than that, I have a question, Ann. Did you get the email from Rachel with regard to the islands? Yes, thank okay. you. No problem. Anything, anything further? No. So uh, how are you going to arrive at, 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 a, at a target date for sending out RFPs? Sean, can we powwow on that? Uh, I would suggest we set up a call on it. Uh, have it, it sounds like Eric's done substantial work on it. Uh, so maybe Eric and Ann um, tag team it and we can set up a meeting. Um, the RFP process is designed um, to make bidding fair. Um, so we need to pay prevailing wage, all these components to it. Um, you know, it, it seems that if you were like a sole source provider, that would be something different. And that would provide for, um, you know, quicker reaction time, um, but it, unless you're doing something that nobody else does in a way nobody else does it, uh, that's something that, you know, we can't really look into. Um, so then we're stuck with the RFP process. So um, we have forwarded it to procurement. We have to abide by the pr procurement policies, um, but I, I'd suggest we set up a meeting with trustee president Schultz, trustee Welker, uh, and then the trustees next meeting is on April 19th, if you gentlemen would circle back, uh, they should have some more answers for you. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Steve. First, Dave. Appreciate okay. you. And circle. We'll get back with you or we'll see you on the 19th. Okay. Thanks. Have Thanks, good. Steve and Steve. Be well. Next uh, discussion that we have is uh, Ron Paulson from Cornell Cooperative Extension Marine Division regarding Sagaponic Pond groundwater study. Charles, is Ron here? Yeah, he's coming in. Great. So this is a partnership, Ron will speak more to it, but this is a partnership between um, Conic Land Trust and Ron, did you wanna introduce this? Uh, sure. Uh, well, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to update you on some of the projects uh, that we have ongoing. One in particular, 
Stag Pond coming up uh, with the Peconic Land Trust. Um, and we're scheduled to do a water quality survey of, of that uh, embayment. <laughs> and that'll include surface water and pore water that we take from the bottom where there's groundwater discharge entering. And then ultimately there'll be <clears throat> some inland wells installed as well as a hope is to, to be able to use that to design some permeable reactive barriers related to certain uh, potential sources there, whether it be <clears throat> residential and such or agricultural. So we're working with several of the farmers there and some of the residents. So the project's ongoing and this phase uh, is due to start very shortly. Chris Gobler has been doing a lot of work there, as you know, over the years. And this is supplemental to that, <clears throat> focus more on groundwater discharge as that affects the water quality of SAG. And then to potentially, hopefully, look at some remedies that might help mitigate some of that near the shoreline. <clears throat> so that's the overall scope of the project. Uh, the work that we're doing will require us to use small boats in there, uh, uh, like a Carolina skiff, 19 foot or so, some John boats. Uh, we'd like to use the ramp by bridge lane there. And, uh, you know, would like to use probably the one uh, skiff with a 60 horsepower motor on it. It's all, you know, we're not speeding around the place. It's just to take the equipment personnel to where we need to do these measurements. So we just wanted to make sure the trustees were aware of all that we're doing in that area. Similar work to other areas we've done in Hampton Bays where we did a PRB behind the bulkhead there and that's working out pretty well. We hope to share some data there soon. And we have other ones in East Hampton Three Mile Harbor, uh, Tambar Creek area. And uh, I was just out this morning on Hog Creek, finishing up a survey there. So it's similar work to those projects, all with the same goal, try to see if we can use permeable reactive barriers near the shore to help mitigate, you know, some of this nitrogen uh, entering these embayments. So that's kind of where we're at. I didn't know if we needed anything specific to use that ramp and SAG. Uh, you know, we don't know if it's possible to leave the small boats there. Uh, it's gonna be like an intense month or six weeks this spring. Uh, and then, you know, we'll be out of there and back probably quarterly to do some other measurements. So. So to be clear, Ron, do, are you looking to park the boat on the trailer at the ramp, or are you looking to are you looking to leave it on an anchor in the pond? I, I mean, ideally, we'd like to leave it on an anchor or a small mooring while we're doing it, just to save a lot of time and energy of hauling it every day. Uh, and then we have to take it to another site. Uh, typically, we try to find some area where we can keep the long, you know, small boats with some of the equipment on there, you know, locked up. Just saves a lot of time, uh, as you know, you know, when you got to haul boats around. Uh, so it's all really just to see if we could find the most efficient way to do this. Uh, you certainly can do it by pulling the boats every day. So we'd prefer to, uh, you know, at least the fiberglass, the Carolina skiff, uh, that one, if we could leave. The John boat's not a big problem. They just go in the back of the pickup trucks and it's not a big issue to launch those. Uh, so Ron, you'd be looking for a temporary mooring from us, which I, I personally think is a good idea. Trailering and driving logistically around the East End with boats and uh, uh, on trailers is 
with the traffic is kind of daunting sometimes. So I think it's a, a good way. I mean, you could put a, a small mushroom anchor and have a anchor on the stern of the boat to the wetlands so you can just tether it back and forth. So that would work out fine. You just not have it in front of the launching ramp where people use it on a daily basis. But I, I think it could work out fairly easily for you. That would be great. Hey. That would really help. I'd appreciate it if we could work that out. That would you know how it's, you, you described all the problems with boats out there. So. I deal with them every day, so. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm sympathetic to that cause. So, and you know, it'll be for about a month or six weeks and then it'll be, you know, won't be as routine down there. We'll be back and forth at times, but we won't be leaving it there for, you know, any extended period really past that. Yep. Fine. Would we need a letter of permission or anything along those lines to do um, this with the details? Yeah, I, would, I mean, I would just give them a simple letter of permission to to put a mooring anchor or, or more basic a mooring anchor in the Sag Pond on a temporary basis so that they could uh, access the pond for uh, you know uh, their research project. So and if anybody, anybody contact us, that's why the boat's here. They're doing uh, water quality research in uh, Sag Pond. So I think everybody in the area would be in favor of it. Sean, you go with that? Yeah, you could do it either as a permit with a 501, uh, 501c3 fee waiver or a letter of permission, either way. Which is faster because don't you want to start pretty soon, Ron? Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably be using the small John boats this week, but the other boat we'd like to bring in maybe in next week. A uh, letter of authorization, either all trustees can sign it, um, that you're agreeing to it on your meeting right now, or our next meeting, we can authorize the president to sign it. I'd be fine with everybody signing it because I think everybody should be... Uh, part and parcel of this whole project because it's going to benefit the whole community down there and, and the board i think the board is all in favor of it that'll, that'll so, be the fastest probably so yes no brainer so uh sean why don't you and ann draft up a letter a simple letter of permission send it out to us for us to look at if we're okay with it we'll send it back and uh sign it and then they can you know have the mooring uh basically uh put in by next week that's outstanding. That would be great. That would Is everybody be okay with that, Scott? Okay. That's great. That's all you need Still? from us today, Ron? Yeah, I just wanted to give you an overview of what's going on. And, you know, we can certainly talk about some of these sites down the road more. If you guys want to hear updates. Definitely. Some of these. I'd love to hear the update when you have it on the Hampton Bays project. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing another sample run this the end of this week. And then after that, we should have a pretty couple good sets of data. We are seeing pretty good reduction of the nitrogen, the, you know, that's coming in. So we're pretty happy with that, but we'll be able to share that in more detail uh, in the near future. That's yeah. great. I think Sean, you got something? Yeah, Ron, I would just ask that you uh, sign a hold harmless in favor of the trustees and provide Cornell Cooperatives Insurance Cert. Yeah, no problem. I can get that. And Ron, if you could just do a quick email with some of the details that we could include in the uh -huh. letter of, of authorization, that would be super too. Okay, yep. Be happy to do that. That's a big help. Yep. Sure. Cool. All right. That's great. Is there anybody else that wished to speak on this that was um, on the call? Nope, it's only you, Ron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. The Platonic okay. Land Trust is also partnered with some of you know this work, but I, I think they couldn't get uh, make it. So they're okay. also involved. Uh, in that's all. That's all I wanted to check about was to make sure that there was no one from Platonic Land Trust that wanted to speak. Yeah, they said you know they understood what we were asking for and they were fine. They, they thought if they could join, they would. Uh, I think Josh Halsey was trying to join, but he got, he had to take care of some other business. So, uh, all right. Well, okay. thank you for, thank you for, uh, you know, coming in and I uh, look forward to putting you on the agenda at some future time to hear some results. 
That'd updates uh, updates are always welcome. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's good. We want to Thank do you. All righty. Very Thank good. You. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks Ron. All right. Hello. Moving on the agenda. Next thing on the agenda is public hearing, and I would like to ask uh, Assistant Town Attorney Sean Cambridge if we have uh, authority to open this uh, public hearing. Hang on with me for just a second here. So on the public hearing regarding Cliff Drive, you do not have jurisdiction currently. Um, open meetings law requires a posting for 10 days uh, prior to the hearing. Um, therefore, this hearing has been rescheduled and re-noticed for April 19th um, so that the appropriate posting and mailings uh, may go out prior to the hearing. So do I need to make a motion to move this to the uh, April 19th? You can't even open it. So it's it's been re-noticed. Um, okay. No jurisdiction to even return it. Um, it's, it's already automatically done. Okay, Sean. Yes. Uh, may I ask why was that not posted? Uh, I, I don't believe they had the so the applicant post a poster and then the mailings. I don't think they had sufficient time between the meetings to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to get those affidavits of mailing and posting back prior to the board having. That's how we determine if the board has jurisdiction to open a public meeting. Um, so I understand that. I, I think the poster was made up on a Friday. Um, I don't think the applicant was able to pick it up according to the trustee's office. Um, and they are able, they've assured the office, they are able to post and do the mailings. Um, and that leaves plenty of time for the April 19th date. So that's how they got there. And did they pick up the new poster yet? They did. They did? And it has been posted? I believe so. Uh, well, before we can open the hearing, we have to get the affidavit back from them. So that those two documents will tell us whether the board has jurisdiction. Um, and then hopefully we'll have those by the 19th. The attorney for the applicant has assured us that they will have that in hand. And what happens if they don't post it and they postpone uh, it? Essentially, if, if they postpone it, the board can then make the decision whether you're going to take that off the agenda or not. And they would forfeit their application fees and have to reapply. Um, so I don't believe it'll come to that. I, after speaking with the attorney, I, I believe they'll be ready to proceed on April 19th. Okay. Thank sure, you. Did, any, did anybody in your office make sure that the new poster and, uh, all the affidavits have a, the date changed on it? Actually, your office handles that, um, your chief of staff, Lisa Dunlap has handled that. Okay. I'm just making sure because it has in the past has been, uh, not changed and we had to re repost it. So I'm making sure that it's uh, streamlined this time. Right. I, I did personally come down to take a look at it um, and it was all correct. Okay. So that's thank good. you for that, thank John. You, John. You're welcome. All right. Anybody else next? Public portion. Is there anybody else that's in the uh, meeting that has their hand up that has something that they would like to address with the trustees aside from what we? just had in this public hearing or non-public hearing. There's a few people I see no hands though. No hands? No hands. Okay. So being that there's no hands and nobody wants to address the board, we're gonna move into the bulk of our meeting here with the trustees resolutions. Uh, Eric is not here. Um, but I guess I can do his and we can we can look at that. First one that he has is 2021-75. It's a waterfowl hunting location uh, issues that we dealt with uh, on the prior meetings. Um, waterfowl hunting location permits that were approved in 2021, hunting season permit holders subsequently received various notices of violation. Uh, and the section 38 Southampton Town Bay Constable, the list is as follows, Christopher J. Ott, permit number 24, Timothy Lopez, number 209, and Timothy Lopez, number 200. Uh, there's a resolution here that these permits will be revoked. Um, and I'd like to make the motion to uh, move forward with this resolution. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
is that trustee resolution 2021-76. It's a renewal application. It's a second renewal for Christine Rossi, permit number GP000053, 65 Point Road, Village of West Hampton Beach. Uh, it's the second uh, renewal application. There's no changes. I suggest that we renew this application. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I have trustee resolution 2021-77. It's an application for John and Angela McNerney at 19 Tarpon Road. Um, I have some questions on this resolution. Uh, James Durier, this resolution wording is saying that we're gonna remove 1.2 capping and install six foot boardwalk land with the bulkhead, naturally vegetated wetland. Is this? Is this wording? I mean, the, the permit application that I have is the current one that I have is four by six fixed platform, handrails, three by 16 aluminum ramp, a six by 20 floating dock, four support piles. Do you, are we on the same page here? Uh, I don't know. I, I think this thing's. I, I think that this trustee resolution 2021-77 needs to go on hold because I think we may have some, some errors here somewhere along the way. I'll have to take a look at it. Okay, so I'm gonna table 2021-77 because what I'm reading in the resolution, it, it, it's just not jiving with, with my paperwork and I'd rather err to the uh, side of caution on this. Um, Second on that, Scott. Yeah, all in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Uh, next resolution that I have is 2021-78. And that's where Mr. Clay Cofield comes in. It's for Jamie Stecker for Old Oak Lane in Quag, New York. Uh, I see Clay, you've been, you've been so enthusiastic about being part of the meeting here. Did you have something that you wanted to add to this, Clay? Uh, only, only if you have questions, I'll add whatever, you know, answer any questions you have. I, I think it's pretty succinct as it is for going to fix the shoreline from you know, eroding more uh, pollutants into the uh, the little little creek there and also guarantee that uh, you know the shoreline is more stable you know that that wave action over there is is it is not intense but it is constant and it just keeps eroding away as we've seen so that that's about all you know I mean it seemed quite uh, you seemed quite confident in our last discussions on the work session that this plan was going to you know, really help out the environment and help out the applicant. Um, and, and I'm inclined to, you know, move it forward if the board is inclined to give it a second and, uh, second. and vote on it. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> I thank you. Will, you're welcome, sure. Clay. Have a nice day. You too. Um, I've got next Trust up, Trustee Ann Welker. Trustee Resolution 2021-79. This is a third renewal for NTS Mecox LLC. Permit PHR 0000274 Point Mecox Lane in Bridgehampton, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-134-1-41.2 Body of Water Swan Creek. This is a renewal um, to continue um, hand cutting of um, Phragmites on the Meacox shoreline. I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Scott, you were the second? Yes. Trustee resolution 2021-80, application of Lorraine A. Davis, irrevocable qualified personal trust, 47 Old Oak Grove Road, North Sea, Suffolk County tax map 900-31-1-10, body of water, fresh pond, um, we had discussed this multiple times at work sessions to remove an existing dock and install a new dock. Um, I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Trustee William Pell, the fourth. Trustee resolution 2021-81. This is a for waterfowl location permit. Um, the 2021 waterfowl hunting location permit will be returned to the wait list. Um, Ethan King permit number 244 will go back to the, the wait list. And he also will be um, removing his blind by the end of the month, he says. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thanks, Bill. 
Uh, trustee resolution 2021-82, warrant number six of 2021. Um, I'll give you the list here. For Bossler and Sweezy, uh, $398.50. Creative Safety Supply, $528.82. PSEG, uh, Long Island for $178.06. Uh, Republic Crane and Hoist Corp, $1,515. Riverhead Building, $43.03. Uh, the Town of Southampton, $1,904.25. That's a reimbursement for buoy purchases. Verizon Wireless, $283.86 for a grand total of $4,851.52. Okay, so I uh, make a motion that we uh, pay the bills. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, Trustee Warner, you have a yep. Resolution. Trustee Resolution twenty twenty one eighty three, expenditure for Chesterfield Associates Inc. for sand reclamation at Far Pond Road. It's a project that we had done last year in front of the road, removing some of the sand that had accumulated on the peninsula that's washing into the pond. Place it in front of the road end. Uh, we're going to do a very similar project remove that sand, place it in front of the road end in the newly established rock revetment at 72 Far Pond Road for public access to the, to the beach and uh, the public passing way uh, to the east towards Middle Pond. Um, I, it's a good project. We worked on it last year. Uh, I would like to uh, have it approved. I need a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Hey, trustee resolution 2021-84. It's a uh, resolution for purchasing of buoys and, and products from Walsh Marine uh, um, for in the amount of $1,530.60. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just before we move on, um, we will sorely miss the efforts and the work of Brandy Campbell, who um, resigned recently on all the trustee matters pertaining to accounts. We'll sorely miss her. Yeah, Brandy was great to work with. We are gonna miss Brandy. And she's a great, she's a great, she's a great person. So I'm very excited for her and her family, you know, embarking on something new. It's really cool. Uh, but she will be missed because she was great to work with. She did a fantastic job in the office. We'll definitely miss her guys. Yeah. Yeah, great person. So thank you for that. Um, so trustee resolution 2021-85, uh, it's, it's a resolution authorizing the board of trustees to waive the 2021 commercial agriculture mooring application fee uh, of $250 for the Peconic Baykeeper. And um, we do nice work with a lot of organizations, Peconic Baykeeper is one of them. And uh, I certainly see it a uh, value, our association, and I would like to waive their fee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. And then I have Trustee Ann Welker. This is, um, as discussed previously, this is the re-noticing of the public hearing. Sean, how much of this do I have to read into the record? Just those several paragraphs? The first two whereas clauses and the notice on the bottom. Uh, the resolution okay. is what memorializes it. Okay. Um, this is a, to serve as a notice of public hearing for 65 Cliff Drive, LLC, 65 Cliff Drive in Noyak, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-9-1-18.1, whereas the Board of Trustees of Freeholders and Commonality of the Town of Southampton have received the permit application of 65 Drive, Cliff Drive, LLC, for the premises located at 65 Cliff Drive, Noyak, New York, for a proposed low cell bulkhead, 90 linear feet with 10 linear feet return with facing piles is proposed in the location in which the previous bulkhead was removed as per the submitted plans. Clean fill sand will be placed behind the bulkhead as necessary to return grade to level behind the new bulkhead. Spartina, Spartina alterniflora is proposed to be planted 18 inches on center and all currently unvegetated areas in the buffer areas shown on submitted plans, whereas the Board of Trustees have determined that the 
proposed project raises a significant degree of public interest and public input and, can, and public input can aid in the decision making process. Now, therefore, be it resolved following notice of public hearing for the publication in the official newspaper of the trustees and to post the same on the official trustees website and sign board. So that will take place, the public hearing will take place April 19th at 1, 2021 at 1 p.m. via video conference. Uh, I'd like to like a second on this. I seconded it. I have well, an they, issue with it. I have an issue with it. Um, the way it's written, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's the body of water should be, uh, it's not a private canal. It's a, it's a, it's a dug canal. A private canal would delineate that the homeowners own the underwater lands. And as far as I'm concerned, we own the underwater lands, everything seaweed of those bulkheads. And I believe the survey shown that was given to us shows that they only own to where the bulkhead was removed. Everything seaward of that is trustee owned underwater land. So I like that to be amended to read uh, dredged canal instead of private canal. I, you want I to amend it on the floor? Yeah. Can we amend it on the floor and then uh, still um, stay on the date? I was noticed the first time by your office. Um, you can certainly, now would be the time to amend it if you're going to. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd recommend if you feel that strongly about it, move to amend. I, I, do. I do. I agree with that on that. Yeah, and there's been the aerial okay. photos that you that I had sent to everybody there so you could. So if we could amend resolution 2021-86 to read body of water dug canal. I'd That's like good. a second. 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 And All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we need a motion to adopt, please. The adopted as amended, Ann. Okay. Um, motion to adopt trustee resolution 2021-86, please. Second. As, am, as amended. As amended. As amended. Thank you. I, I will I will second her motion as amended on the floor. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. So the public hearing is now set for the 19th, and then we can do further due diligence. All right. That concludes our uh, activities for today is does anybody else have anything that they need to discuss before we adjourn our meeting just can Bell, we get, nothing good can we get a just, quick update on me cox sure um me cox is open um as some of you may have noticed someone did have the unfortunate um um drive through it and got stuck at some point over the weekend. I don't know any of the details of that, but I think there are a couple pictures flying around. Uh, but Meekox is open um, and it is draining across the flats. Um, the salinity has um, dropped a bit. It's in the range of 12. Um, the bay level is about the same. It's just below um, the second black line on the marker. So it's about where it's been since um, end of January. Is there anything Thanks, else? Yeah. No, that's good. Thanks. Thanks yeah. SAG is open. Um, SAG is uh, the bay level, the pond height, and SAG is good. And Dr. Gobler's um, buoy should be going in there soon. So we'll be able to have a bit more information as to dissolved oxygen and salinity. So. Good. Anybody else have anything? The only thing that I would like to add, uh, and, and Lisa, you could listen up on this. And I, I saw and you've all received a, an email from uh, Constable Rich Franks relative to uh, our two, two infrastructure projects that we have going on, Road H and South Bay Avenue in Eastport. Uh, we're gonna have to send a letter out to um, the, the people there that have um, boats that are docked at those two facilities that we're gonna be engaging in the repairs of uh, the deterioration on those two facilities. 
and there's there's going to be a, a little disruption while we have you know equipment in the area. So, so we really need to put them on notice uh, that it's unavoidable. We have to do these repairs, and at some point in time, they're going to be asked to move their their boats uh, so that we can get in and do these repairs. Um, I had an, an offsite meeting, like I said, with Constable Franks, and um, you know we're doing everything we can to get it all done as, as timely as possible uh, with as little disruption as possible. It's gonna be really great when we're all done, but there's gonna be a, a period of time where there's gonna be um, you know, some, some need to move some boats out of the way. So we really need to send a simple letter out just to those folks, let them know to expect it so it doesn't just sneak up on them, okay? Something simple, go ahead, Lise. Uh, what two facilities were you referring to, please? Road, road H. This is really only affecting, it's going to only affect two vessels for a short period of time. And then we're talking about the pier on uh, South Bay Avenue and Eastport over, over by Trumpets. Right, South Bay Avenue. Okay, okay. so uh, who is simple it? letter is not a huge, you know, it's not a huge quantity. It's not a tremendous amount of people, but we just want to make them aware that there's going to be improvements and repairs done. And it's going to require us coming in with some equipment and some of the boats are going to have to, you know, for a temporary period of time, move out of the way. Um, so actually physically remove their vessels? Well, yes. Yes. Move get them to yeah, another exactly. okay. docking location well, temporarily. Sean, Sean, will you help me draft that letter? Sure. Okay. When do you want this to be effective, Scott? Starting well, we, we, don't, we don't know it. What, we don't have a uh, solid date. Um, that these vessels are, are, are you know, that the, the repairs are going to commence because, you know, as you're aware here in the town of Southampton, we, we use, you know, tropical hardwoods to do our repairs. And you're talking about uh, timbers that are sourced in Guyana and brought in on a ship. And, you know, when you're, you're looking for specific quantities and, and, and sizes and whatnot, uh, you know, things, things take a little bit of time. So they're, they're working on putting this stuff together. You know, it's been difficult enough with supply chain issues, um, getting all different types of parts, as many people would know, uh, let alone things that are coming from a tropical rainforest. So as soon as, you know, they, they, they get this stuff, uh, we'll have a better time frame on that. But I think that people should be given a, 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 an ample heads up that there's going to be repairs and improvements. You know, they can clearly see there's, you know, deteriorated uh pier and and stuff that's got to be fixed and you know we're on the schedule to do that and we're going to do it as timely as we possibly can um but right, i just want to give my heads up you're going to get Scott, a range like may bill, 1st or june 1st or bill uh scott you might want to um send the letter out and tell them that we're going to be fixing the dock and we'll let them know 56 hours ahead of time of when they physically have to move the boat to another dock space yeah, that's that that's fair because at least I can't give you a lockdown date because I don't yeah. know I don't know when containers are coming off of ships. I mean, you saw what happened in the Suez Canal and yeah. whatever got all jammed <laughs> up, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of logistics that are out of our control. So I don't have a, a hard date like that. I mean, we've had other projects that have got jammed up because of material. So, uh, but we're doing the best we can to source what we need and get it done as quickly as possible so that the people can go back to enjoying it um, safely. Um, but, but Bill's got a terrific suggestion. We give him the heads up and we tell him we're going to let him know, like he said, 56 hours, 40, whatever it is, you know. And Sean can help us with, uh, with that. I don't think it's a huge amount of people that are affected. No. No. What is the timeline, Scott, when you want this letter sent out? I would send it out as soon as you possibly can do that. That way, it's it's out of your out of your way, and it's on it's their radar. There. Exactly, they can they, make they know about it. Future accommodations for their vessels. Exactly, I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll be pleased to see that that it's going to be fixed because it really needs to be fixed. Been a long time coming. Great, it can happen. Yeah, it is. It is a great thing. We just gotta you gotta stay on it, you know. So I think that's you know. It's a good thing for the public to know that deteriorated infrastructure is going to be fixed. And then the other side is some people are going to be inconvenienced for a little bit of time while it's being done. You can't really do anything about that. No. Work in progress, Scott. Yeah. 
yeah. I so that's wanted... pretty much, I think, you know, all that I uh, all that I have. And I know, you know, we had this meeting, we had executive meeting. I know there's a lot going on in the trustees. It's just a lot of responsibility and just a lot of different different issues that you have to deal with on a regular basis. And I just appreciate working with everybody here. And um, I wish you all a great day. Wait, wait, uh, two, you got two, more? Two well, things just thing? really quickly. Two? Just um, this morning, um, there was a, an update on the West, West Shinnecock water quality study. Um, in case um, any of you were not able to participate, there are two more sessions this week, one Wednesday morning, one Friday morning. This is, I repeat, just a study at this point, but it's also available for um, environmental groups or civics and the general public to participate. That information, I believe, is on the town website. Um, some of you have been present um, at uh, various meetings with this West Shinnecock water quality study. And, and I also just wanted to say on Thursday, Dr. Gobler did his annual State of the Bays um, announcements. And he used some, and I would thoroughly encourage any of you who did not, weren't not, uh, able to participate at that time to view it on Dr. Gobler's YouTube channel, but I just wanted to, um, he used twice during his presentation, the, a quote actually from Martin Luther King, and he said it's, it's different when we're referring to it, but it, it read like this, we're now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We're confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. So I think our efforts as trustees to protect and preserve are an important part of what Dr. Gobler is referring to when he's when he quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King the fierce urgency of now and the importance of that. You know, on that subject, I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking about this. I I really think that we should have Dr. Gobler in as one of our discussions at an upcoming meeting to to lay this out for the board. I mean, it's our Bay Bottoms that's become a many times the laboratory. And I think it's uh, it's appropriate for him to address the board um, and give us um, an update on the projects and um, and get it out there. So I think what we should do is uh, extend an invitation for Dr. Gobler to attend perhaps the next work, not work session, but general session, one o'clock session and reserve him ample time uh, as we did the two other discussions that we had, but reserve Dr. Gobler ample time to lay that out for the trustees and everybody else out in CT the world. We can do that. I'm sure he'd be happy to do that. He's very busy, but um, we'll see what we could do. I think that it's appropriate. What do you think, Eddie? Yeah, I think it's uh, have him come in and update on, on his projects and what's going on on the bays. I mean, they got, you know, the Western Shinnecock Bay with their shellfish restoration, the eelgrass, yeah. the oyster reefs. Um, He's got a lot of stuff that going on in, in our bays, and it's uh, nice for us to be updated and for the public to be updated on what's happening out there. I mean, I'm, I'm looking out at the bay right now at my house, in my Zoom meeting, the water's crystal clear blue. It looks like the Caribbean. So maybe we are making a, a turn for the better as far as the water quality. Right. And to Ann's point, you know, it's like there are so many meetings that we end up having to attend and, and so many things that we get pulled in so much direction. Sometimes you can't make everybody else's schedule, but our schedule that we have is, is kind of set in stone and published. So I really think that for all the efforts of the trustees, let's, let's invite Dr. Gobler in. Let's keep the other discussions to a minimum on that session and let's give him the ample time that he needs to address the board and, and everybody else who's interested. So uh, I'll be more than happy to reach out to Dr. Gobler. I mean, I don't know, you know, if anybody else does, but I, I will take that on. It's not a big deal. Okay? Yeah. okay. It's good PR for everybody. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. And it's, and it's good for everybody on the board to be able to, to have the interaction 
back and forth. And like I said, we all try and make all these meetings, but you're pulled in so many directions with so many things going on. It's, it's, it's just, it's amazing. His, you know? state, his state of the base the other night was really impressive. And um, the sanctuaries that have been created are an important part of that. And I'm sure he'd be happy to attend and, and uh, yeah. share his results of this past year's research with the board. I, I, I agree, it'd be a great idea. So you have anything else, Ann? All good. Okay. Eddie? No, I'm good. No? Sean? You good? You don't want to go another hour, two hours? Huh? You guys are in good shape. Nothing from me. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Bye. Have a nice day, everybody. Take care. Take